Hi, and welcome to Dramatic Knits. My name is Steve, also known as Dramatic Knits. And I'm Callie, also known as Calsters. And today is Sunday, May 8th, 2016. This is episode 256. If you're a... The brutal, the blah, blah, blah. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back one more week. And if you're new, hopefully you enjoy the show. So, we're recording once again on a new device and hoping that it'll have somewhat better results. Um, last week, I am very sorry for the abrupt cutoff at the end. We were trying to record on my phone. Um, while the lighting was much better, um, the file size was huge and used all the memory on my phone, and so hence the abrupt cutoff. And then we were having issues getting the file off of my phone onto a computer and then getting that file uploaded onto, even after being compressed, uploaded onto the website, which is what iTunes pulls from. So if you watch via iTunes, there was an episode last week. Um, I would check either the website DramaticNets.com or our YouTube channel, which is Dramatic Nets. There is a web, uh, an episode out there, um, but... I could not get the actual file onto the video software on WordPress, which is where our blog is, um, and so iTunes was not able to pick up last week's video. I am sorry, I was well aware of that it was not out there, but um, wasn't much else I could do. So this week we tried recording back on the um, computer, but the lighting was, I don't know if I need a new webcam or what. The lighting is completely off. We were looking at some of our old videos back when we used to edit on iMovie, and we're like, wow, look at that picture. It was so clear. Um, I don't know. Um, so the lighting was really off, and then if we use the built-in camera on my actual desktop, it looks like there's a smoky haze in here, and yeah, it just wasn't great. So we're actually recording on my uh, work computer in the hopes that things will be better. Uh, the lighting seems a little bit better. I'm not sure about the quality or focusing, but um, we're going to go with it. So um, yeah, so here we are. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there, whether it be of uh, the human variety or pet, pets or plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can have a nice garden and still be a mom. You know, I feel like if you're keeping something alive, Qualities. <laughs> Qualities. True, true. Qualities of life. Uh, so, uh, it is Mother's Day. I've already stopped by my mom's and given a card and sat and chit-chatted for a little while. So, uh, that was nice. And, um, quick week in review for myself. I have two weeks and one day left of work before summer break. I'm not counting down by any means. Um, full week this week. It was... It was alright. It wasn't too bad. I had to do some district testing on Monday and Tuesday, which was pretty boring. Um, and then we're finishing up reading Antigone, which is an ancient Greek tragedy. I counted in my head how many times I've read that play because I've taught it every year that I have um, been teaching. And I counted up how many sections of sophomores I've taught it to. I have read that play 41 times now in seven years. Not to mention watching the movie on top of that in every class. So, got down like the back of my hand. Uh, so that's been fun. Um, I guess our high school's prom was this past weekend. I don't ever have anything to do with that. Uh, but uh, we have our senior awards night tomorrow night, and they are actually requiring all staff to attend as part of our contractual hours. So it's going to be a little bit longer of a day um, tomorrow. And then we have our last faculty meeting on Tuesday. So that's going to be exciting. Why they always back these things up to, you know, day after day when we have to do extra duties is beyond me. But it is what it is. But that means the year is coming to a close. So that's good. So that's pretty much been my week. Nothing else too exciting. I, uh, Andy and I did travel out to Marion, Iowa on Friday night, um, stayed in a skeezy hotel, and got up and vended at the Shepherd's Market, which was a wonderful um, event, uh, small, about 15 different vendors, but it was a good event. I got to see um, some people that I have vended with before and catch up with some people and as well as meet some new-to-me vendors and um, hear about and see some products from some 
new to me dyers and, and uh, artisans. So that was always fun. I'll go into that a little bit more at the end of the show when we talk about leading men fiber arts. But other than that, this uh, that's pretty much been my week. Very cool. Um, my week has been pretty, pretty busy. Um, work's been crazy, and it continues to get crazy as my... I don't know if I mentioned it last week, but my coworker and her husband are definitely moving, um, and it's a lot sooner than we expected, but that's that's life, and I'm really happy for both of them because they're both moving to, um, well, not that one would move without the other, but <laughs> um, they're moving to the Tampa, Florida area, so that's really exciting for them, and they showed me the house that um, they're looking at putting an offer in, and it's gorgeous, and... Um, she told my coworker was like, and here's your guest bedroom <laughs> and here's your guest bathroom. And they have, um, the house that they're looking at is, um, it's three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a bonus room, a screened in outdoor room and, um, a screened pool. So, and jacuzzi, so it's really nice. And there's a shed in the back that's electrically wired, has water running through it, and they've got a spot for their garden. So it really is the total package for both of them in terms of, um, uh, in terms of the things that they love to do. Um, Amy loves garden and Scott loves to um, do micro brewery. brewery. I can, <laughs> it's trouble for me to say. Um, but, you know, and then uh, Scott works for a predominantly large computer company, and uh, he works from home quite a bit. So um, that bonus or that third room would be great to turn into his office. They don't know what they're going to do with the bonus room, but then they'd have a guest bedroom and then, of course, their master bedroom and bath. Um, gorgeous kitchen. So I hope that they get the chance to put an offer in. Uh, hopefully it doesn't get snatched before they get a go. This week they're looking at homes down there, so um, it's going to be kind of a test run of how we do without her in the office for a full week. So that'll be interesting. She's left us really detailed notes and has filled me in on some stuff, so I feel like we can tackle this week, and then it's just going to be one of those, like, we're going to tackle every week as far as we can, so that's going okay. And then um, just doctor's appointments and yesterday I went to my last alma mater's graduation that I really kind of have to attend um, because my friend uh, she is actually a year younger than I am or came in a year after I did uh, she's fine she finally graduated and uh, she had a lot of medical problems and uh, she switched course catalogs which meant she had different graduation requirements a couple of times so it's great that she uh, ended her career, uh, if you will, um, the way that she wanted to. She, um, It's crazy. She won a top senior seminar prize, and they didn't do it when um, I was in school, and she got a $1,000 scholarship because of it, or a $1,000 prize check. So that was really cool, and she won department honors. So she finished the way she wanted to finish and I think that's a huge testament to um, both her as a student and both you know everyone that supported her throughout the way so I'm hoping to get on the alumni board so then I'd be attending graduations just to attend as an alumni but um, and then I also had my one of my best friends had her baby shower yesterday and she actually gave birth to the baby this morning it was really unexpected wow. Really, really unexpected because she was due May 25th. Um, and it's kind of, it's funny because um, six years ago today, she graduated herself from our alma mater. And then uh, at that same graduation, her husband proposed to her at the end of graduation ceremony line. And now they have their baby, um, Lennox. And so it's really cool, you know, how, how dates kind of align themselves, so. That's all I really have to say. Bunch of really good stuff going on. Well, it's always nice when you can have positive things happening around you. Yeah. If you noticed, I might have gotten sunburnt. <laughs> um, I like to call this my January tan. So then that way, when you see me in January, it looks like I might have gone on a cruise. But no, 
I just got painfully burnt almost a year ago, and now it's starting to mellow out. So just in case if you're like, oh, Kelly, you look a little red. <laughs> I know. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's get to the knitting. What's taking about? I have nothing. I'm close, and I am hoping to have a finished object to show you next week. So um, keep your fingers crossed for that. We'll see, though. I almost had a finished object if I wouldn't have um, miscounted quite a bit. So. <laughs> it's what it is. It is. You get the more enjoyment of knitting, right? <laughs> I do. So let's move into uh, what's performing this week. First for me is the Banner Day by Megan Williams. I'm using Leading Men Fiber Arts Showstopper in the Metamorphosis colorway on size 5 US, which is 3.75 millimeters. And this is what I'm hoping to finish. Technically, according to the pattern, which I think I am going to just knit it to the pattern, I think I'm ready to um, be done with it. I have, uh, I think, another four rows, and then I can bind off. And I do only have this much yarn left, which is a decent amount. I could do more, but I'm like, meh. I'll put it in that crocheted granny square blanket that I've not worked on in Lord knows how long. Anyway... So you can see the dicky do. I added maybe, I don't know, four or five rows. I did a whole episode of Fat Squirrel Speaks while watching it. So here it is. I'm not trying to cover up Callie, but with the camera angle of the laptop, we're much closer. If you can't tell, you get to see all of our <laughs> imperfections on our faces, even though it's not that clear of a camera to show the pores. But um, there we go. And while the lighting is not the best with this new camera, oh, that's better, facing it towards the window. Um, doesn't have the focus that the webcam does. So um, there's that. I just got to do a few more lace uh, rows and then, or skip rows, and then um, bind that puppy off and block it. Um, I really didn't want to rush to finish it either because I want to show it to you once and for all when it's been blocked because I think it'll open up a lot more. So, um, My Quaker Lines by Susan Ashcroft. I don't think I even touched that this week, guys. I've been so busy, so I'm not going to show that to you this week. Um, but moving on to my Ayano by Mercedes Tarasovich, which I'm doing as a knit along for the Super Summer Knit Together, a retreat hosted by the Knit Girls in Nashville, Tennessee this July. I'm doing it as a knit along with them, and um, I brought it with me on my trip to and from Iowa, and I did a decent amount of knitting on it, though it does not going to look like much. I was hoping to start getting to the one color lace sections, and... I've got to do one more pearl back row or knit row back, and then I can take off one of the colors. So um, here it is so far right now. You can see the two color striping. It's bunched up on the needles, but I did do a decent amount when you look at the dicky do, and it is increasing and whatnot. So, and both of these yarns are a merino silk blend, so that's really nice. And it will open up and drape nicely once it's been blocked and you open up that garter stitch. Because right now this is pretty much the whole body before you get into more lace down here. And I'm like, that's not that big, but once you open it up, it will be fine. Alrighty. Oh, and that's on a size 5 US, 3.75 millimeters as well. So, moving right along to... Um, my Jacques Cousteau hat. Is it up here? Yep, it's up here. I did work on this during the show yesterday. Um, this is my show knitting. You haven't seen it in a couple weeks. Or, yeah, about two, three weeks because I haven't worked on it. But I am knitting the Jacques Cousteau hat, which is pretty much a ribbed um, watchman cap that will be have a fold-over brim. I'm using some Leading Men Fiber Arts Dramaturg, which is our DK weight in the Gatsby colorway. So there's that. I'm really loving the way this is knitting up and the layered colors in it. Mm -hmm. I think it is very nice. So it looks like it's going to be huge, but the ribbing sucks it in. So, And I don't like a tight-fitting hat. So there's that. And that is on a size 4 US, which is a 3.5 millimeter. Last thing I'm working on, didn't get much love, but I made the executive decision. Um, 
let me tell you what the project is. The uh, I'm working on Brownie's Sock Recipe, which is by Gina Canoos. And um, she has the Brownie Knits podcast, which I still have yet found time to um, work on. And um, But I did ask you guys last week to chime in and let me know whether... Oh, it's already up. Uh, whether I should continue the pattern down the foot or just do stockinette. I made the executive decision, hey, I'm going to do stockinette because... Um, I really do like the look of stockinette, and I like the way the variegated colors play out on it. So I did her textured stitch um, down the leg. I did 20 repeats of the pattern, and then now I am doing stockinette. And I love the way that this color is playing up on the stockinette, that little bit there you can see at the bottom. So you can see the dicky-doo where I left off. I did do my first garter stitch heel. Um, we'll see how it fits. I haven't tried it on quite yet. It doesn't look very deep compared to having no heel flap and all that, so um, not really sure. But it kind of reminds me like an afterthought heel just done in garter stitch, which it's nice that you don't have to purl. Um, but I guess when you're knitting in the round, you don't have to purl either, so... I don't know. We'll see. It was something different, and I learned a new technique. I am using Leading Men Fiber Arts uh, Showstopper Intermission Base, which is a half skein of our Showstopper Base for in the Perfection Colorway for Cuff Heel, and I'll do it for the toe as well. So there's that. Done and done, son. Knitting these on a size 1 US, which is a 2.25 millimeter. And that's all that I'm working on this week. Very cool. I'm working on two things actively. I have looked at starting new projects, and as soon as I get some done, then not, <clears throat> excuse me, as soon as I get my socks done, I plan on starting something new. Um, I'm still working on my Thea Coleman uh, shawl, the Crim de Menthe. Um, I somehow messed up, and it's been a little bit hard tinking back to where I think I did. I think I need to take out two more rows, and then I will be back where I should need to figure out where I need to pick back up. So I want to get that done. Um, I know that I'm late to getting it done for SSK, but I would just like to have it done for peace of mind right. um, because I really like it and I might end up gifting it. I haven't decided yet. So anyhow, I'm working on a basic boomerang and this is um, Roko Bobolet lace and I'm knitting it on size 4 US 3.5 mm meter. Sorry, I always have to check because it, I always forget. But I moved the dicky do up from where I was last time, and this is where I'm at. So I didn't get a whole lot of progress, but um, really it's been really hot to work on this because it kind of sticks a little bit. And I brought this to graduation yesterday, but seeing that it was Satan degrees outside, um, I really didn't feel like having so much sweat in this. It was almost 80 degrees, or is it? No, it was over 80 degrees on Friday, and it's funny because we were driving to Iowa, and I said, it's funny how your body adjusts to the seasons in the Midwest because when you come out of winter, it's like 80 degrees, and you're like, oh, God, turn on the air. <laughs> but then when you come out of summer and it turns to 80 degrees, you're like, oh, I need to put on the shirt, you know, the pants mm -hmm. and a hoodie because it's getting a little chilly. So... You know, it is what it is, but... It was 92 by the time graduation was done. Mm. Like, it was hotter than Satan now. Like, there was no breeze, no nothing, and we were sitting underneath um, uh, an oak tree, and it was starting to, like, um, the pods were starting to fall off, so, like, here you would be, like, sweating all sweatiness, and then, like, a pod had hit you in the face, and you're like... <laughs> Like, you'd be getting pod on you, removing some sweat, 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 pod, sweat. So, the struggle was real, my friends. And so, anyways, um, I'm working on a vanilla sock pattern. This is in Friday Studios um, Hawaii colorway. And I'm knitting these on size US 0, and I'm pretty sure it's a crazy, ridiculous millimeter that I don't know right off the top. I think it's a one. one millimeter. I think so. So anywho, this might look like the same place that I was at last time and you might be correct, but I was telling Steve before we sat down to record that um, I was working on these and I got to the point where I needed to um, Kitchener and I was like, man, this just does not look right. 
and I had my first sock that I did, I missed three colored stripes. And I was like, how did this even happen? Like, you think I would notice this way before this. But I was clicking, clicking, and clicking. And while I didn't have the same problem Steve did with his not counting tens because I did a manual test, but I'm pretty sure that I hit my bag on a bunch of different stuff and it just started clicking itself. <laughs> and then that made me mad. So basically now I have caught myself up to the place where I can be happy of. So that's all I'm actively working on. Neat. What's in rehearsal? I don't have anything immediately planned because I don't think I'm going to cast on anything when I finish the banner day. I think I need to just keep diligently working on what I have on the needles and eventually I'll be able to cast something else on. So I actually have a couple of patterns picked out. Um, so for our uh, cow going on, the, our feature designer cow, um, just to run through that real quick, um, you can use or you can use any pattern, whether that was gifted, it's in your library or you purchase now by any of our featured uh, designers that are in our locked feature designer thread. Um, you can use any base of yarn. If you use any base of Leaning Man Fiber Arts, it, you can enter the finished object thread twice. And um, let's see, you had to start on April 1 or after, and we are going until June 30th. And then that's basically all you need to know. Mm -hmm. um, so, I said that I wanted to do um, Bad Nut by Josh Ricks for my pattern, but I was looking at my schedule and what I think I can get done by June, and I don't think I can get it done. Not that it's a difficult pattern or anything, but I think I want to set a little bit more realistic expectation. So Josh was very kind to gift me um, the 357 mitts, and there's short rows and shaping going on, and I am going to do that instead because I'm going to do it as a gift for Christmas um, because there's a couple of people that um, their hands get cold, but their fingers don't. And so I thought the fingerless mitts would be a perfect, um, you know, perfect pattern. And then if I have more time, I'd like to do um, one of Rachel Coopy's patterns from her Fancy Feet book that she both gifted, or she gifted both Steve and I the book. Um, to review, and she was also one of our featured designers. Mm -hmm. So those are my two three, five, seven mitts for sure now. Um, and then if I get more time, then I'm going to do a pair of socks because I think it would be nice to expand some of my sock skills. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've gotten. I've gotten review. Well, let's talk spinning behind the scenes. Um, I did finish some spinning finally. It's been like over a month. I just don't have as much time y'all and unfortunately I'm sure a lot of you understand so um, I finished spinning for um, my friend Carla I finished spinning the Into the World Polworth Silk in the Cerulean Dream colorway and I got about 298 yards of I'd say about a sport, sport weight 2 ply fractal spun and here it is so um, you can see it's got this yellows, greeny yellows, um, sh several shades of blue, and teal. Um, so I like the way it came out. Perfect. And this is my last gain of commission spinning for Carla. So and then I get to move on to my new client after I finish spinning one for me, which I'm going to talk about now. So this is done. This will be going out to Carla here in a few days. And then um, I did my random number generator with my fiber stash, and I picked out another skein of Three Waters Farm, which are braid of Three Waters Farm, which is great because I'm part of their top of the month club, and I have like 12, had 12 braids untouched. And so um, it picked for me some Falkland in the, um, no, I'm not, sorry, not Falkland. I'll talk about Falkland in a minute, though. Some super fine merino in the summer's chrysalis colorway and I decided I'm actually going to sorry thank you um Navajo or chain ply this um and just keep the short shorter blips of color um and kind of here's all the colors in it so it's got these 
coppery oranges and a little bit of um, some silver grays into this deep rich blue steel color it's got some tans the greens I mean it's got so many beautiful colors and it's funny it's summer summer's chrysalis because it looks kind of fallish to me but you can see all the beautiful colors and I'm spinning from one end where am I spinning from? Oh, over here so you can see how short the blips of color are so when I chain it apply it on itself um, it will not have very long repeats um, but it'll keep the colors together so I just felt like doing something a little bit different mixing it up and so that's what I started this morning I did a, just a little bit onto the wheel so that's what I finished and that's what I'm working on in the terms of spinning let's talk about um, in the scene shop my cross stitching I did not get much done this week um, in fact, I did not even take the time to take it out of its hoop. And I did move it over so you're not going to see as much. I'm doing the Begin Row by Bent Creek. And um, I finished up a tree. I started a new tree, added a little bit of brown, and added the word must. So not a whole lot there, but is what it is. So I'm enjoying it. I'll be able to do a little bit of cross stitching this evening, maybe. So there's that. And that's it. So um, nothing really new there. Just slowly but surely. It's going to take a while. Cross stitching is not nearly as fast as knitting, even though some of you are like, knitting's not that fast either. No, it's not. But cross stitching is like a snail's pace to, um, <coughs> to knitting. So... Let's move on into In the Spotlight. What are we watching and reading? Well, I'm not really watching much of anything. I have not had time, again. Um, but I have been reading, and I finished listening to a book um, called No Coming Back by Keith Houghton. Um, it's set in Minnesota, and it's about a guy who... Um, was convicted of <coughs> killing his girlfriend when he was 17... And um, he did not do it, um, but he was in prison for 18 years and was paroled early or paroled um, and was living in um, St. Paul, I think, and doing a work thing, you know, work cooperative. And then um, his dad, who he has a very estranged relationship with, um, has a, a stroke and he comes back home to the town where this, you know, the murder went down and everything. And it's kind of like trying to clear his name, um, but yet there are some twists and turns and, um, you know, major events that happen along the way. And, um, you know, the several people in town believing that he is the true murderer don't want him there. Um, so do I think it was an excellent piece of writing? No. Um, did I give it about three stars out of five on, on Goodreads? Yes. So... Um, I did enjoy it. Um, again, the, the book that I listened to to and from work prior to this one was set in Minnesota about a murder. So it was kind of, there was a lot going on there that were similar. So um, would I have enjoyed it more if I gave it a little bit of time before listening to, or after listening to the previous book? Maybe a little bit. But um I don't know. I don't think the characters were as well developed as they could have been, um, in my opinion. Um, I also finished reading Lie to Me by David Martin. Um, and that one I actually tried to find on Audible out of my bookshelf that I've had for years, and I couldn't. So I brought it into my school library as just a donation into my classroom library. And I picked it up to read along with my kids during silent reading when they read in, in my class. And um, I actually ended up throwing it out when I was done because it is not appropriate for my classroom library. And I thought about bringing it onto the podcast and doing a giveaway with it. And I was like, I don't even think it's worth that. Um, I just didn't like the protagonist. I don't think that he was well written. It was a lot of weird things going on. There was some sexual things and curse words and weird things and uh but it was about a cop who 
used to be very good at what he did, that he could kind of be the human lie detector, and then he kind of wusses out and is just riding out till retirement, and he kind of um, gets involved with this case where um, they're trying to figure out if this guy was killed or if he committed suicide, and yeah, it just, it was, it was weird. Um, so, I don't know if I really recommend it, but I think I still gave it three stars, um, but I don't know if I'd say go out and pick it up. It's an older book, too. I think it's from, it was copyrighted in 1998, so. But uh, that's what I've finished reading this week. Cool. I haven't uh, finished reading anything, but, and really the only thing that I've watched is Empire. I actually, I had said last time that I um, had watched it, like, the night that it came out, all, like, all this season um with just work and craziness um i didn't actually get to watch it till this morning so i watched it and there's only two episodes left and i have to say uh, like of the season or the show uh, of the season i mean i have to say of this show i mean like i just find that it keeps getting better and better because they i hate when shows leave you on cliffhangers like they introduce one element and they never address it. But this one, like, um, they brought back, so, uh, Miss Vivica Fox is, um, one of Cookie Lion's sisters and they brought her back to bring back, um, bring this part of the plot, you know, to kind of arrest, but now it's kind of developing something else, but it aligns with something that's already going on. So, like, I really like that because, you know, it's like, um, it just, it wraps itself up really nicely, um, either with death or it, you know, gets played out a little bit more. So I really like this, um, totally called who pushed Rhonda down the stairs. Um, but they haven't addressed it. And I think Rhonda's going to flip out at some point and probably kill her, kill, um, what's well, Boo Boo Kitty, um, will kill her at some point. Um, they're taunting that either next week or the season finale that one of the one of the Lions family is not making a return. There has been speculation that Andre's character, um, Drew, uh, I can't remember his name. Um, anywho, doesn't matter if you know the show. Andre's character, uh, or the guy that plays Andre's character, um, was said to not want to be on the show anymore because he's not getting enough airtime. So if that those rule if those rumors are true, um, I'd be sad, but I'd also not be surprised uh, because the creator of the show um, and he, from what again, I have heard, don't exactly see eye to eye. So it wouldn't surprise me that he would kill him off, which would be devastating. So, um, but again, those are all just rumors that you read about your favorite show. Who knows what kind of validity they have? So, um, but I hope they keep him and kill like boo boo kitty off no offense to her but you know she's messy uh, that's all i have to say about that <laughs> um but i really do like the show so if you're an empire fan you need to you need to like comment in the thread because i feel like none of my friends are watching it this year and i need someone to like really talk mad mad talk about this show because there's some theories that i have and i need to expel those so my piece about Empire. So let's move into Stash Enhancement. I was kind of a bad boy at the Shepherd's Market yesterday, and it is what it is. Let's just put it out there. It is what it is. Andy was not very happy with me. Um, I think I'm getting to the point where he's not so supportive. And me bringing in more yarn, he's like, it's one thing if you'd work through it, but you're not. You have no time to knit, so you need to pulp bringing in more yarn. And I'm like, pasha. <laughs> Play it, please. So, um, my girl Sarah of Yarn Geek Fibers was there, and... She's lovely. She's got lovely stuff, too. I love her fiber. So, mm -hmm. um, I actually went over there to look, take a look at her yarn, because she, she does fiber, and she does fiber very well. 
but she does do yarn and she has some interesting blends that not a lot of indie dyers carry. And um, I was looking at this color combo she had placed together and I was like, I really like that. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to probably be discontinuing this blend soon because it's not a huge seller. And I was like, oh, really? Um, it's a worsted weight merino and bamboo mix. It's 60% merino, 40% bamboo. Um, it's hand washed, so it's not machine washable. It's called her Whiz Bang uh, Base. And you get 230 yards to um, 3 ounces. And um, I didn't immediately pick it up, but I went back to our booth and I got on Ravelry. And I was like, okay, what do I have in my queue that I could use this for? And I actually have a three-color scarf that's not chevron, but it's like V's almost. And you do with increases and decreases, I'm assuming. Um, and it makes kind of V's of the three different colors. So um, I've got two semi-solids and then a kind of slightly variegated. Doo, doo, doo. So I picked up, and she names all of her bases after famous people in the science industry. And so I picked up a skein of whiz in the Gertie Corey colorway, who studied metabolism. Ooh. And it's just a brown. And then I picked up the Lady Godiva colorway, which is just a wonderful white that grew color. You're like, okay. But there is a beautiful sheen. You can't see it that well, but there is a nice sheen to it and it's oh so soft and luscious. It is. And it doesn't the nice thing is it doesn't feel like it's gonna be like alpaca warm. Like it almost has kind of like a cool touch to it and mm -hmm. it's weird. It's not like cotton cool, but it'll keep you warm but not like stifling trap the heat in. Um and that bamboo just gives it a wonderful sheen. The last one is the Harriet Quimby colorway and she was the first woman to fly the English Channel. So this is going to be the color combos and I think it's beautiful. I think it'll make a very nice scarf eventually but when I'm ready to knit it I've got the yarn for it. So check her out at yarngeekfibers.com. She has a beautiful website and um, some beautiful products. So that's that. And then I was like, okay, I got to go leave. I got to, when I was leaving the booth to go see if I can find a project for that. And I was like, hey, wait, girl. And I saw some fiber. Now, it's not her BFL Sparkle, which I love. But it's her Falkland. That's where I was getting Falkland from before. I really like that. And this is called, hi, my name is Dam Hoover. Like Dam, comma, Hoover. And uh, it's beautiful grays, a little bit of uh, na natural white, and this beautiful aqua color. So, and she always has these, like, poofy braids. They're almost like babies, you know? Like, they're the size of a baby. It's a fiber baby. There's the show title. Fiber baby. So, there's that. And I really liked that. So, I picked that up. And then I had a little bit, of, we did a, a little bit of uh, trading, and I had a little bit of extra money, so I went back. Um, as I mentioned, we we're doing Rolex occasionally. I've done, like, one big set of them. Um, they're not up in the shop. Um, I've just had them at shows, and um, I picked up some sparkle to throw into a few of those raw lags here and there. So um, I did pick up some holographic Angelina, some silver sparkle to throw in there. I'm not a huge Angelina fan, but she was like, no, wait, feel the holographic. It's not that that rough. Um, I am a more of a fan of Firestar, which is much finer, and so I picked up some kind of white silver and then like a spring green. I don't know what you call this one. But. So I picked up two bags of Angelina to also throw into some, now it's lying in the air, uh, to throw into some more lags eventually. Then Erica Luter, who is the um, dyer behind Dreams and Fiber, was there and she vended at Zombie Apocalypse last year, and I did not have the um, the time, unfortunately, during that show to check out her booth or make any purchases. But um, I did go through like the last half hour and um, picked out some yarn from her. Uh, I tried to pick out some heavier weight because I have a ton of uh, fingering. Fingering. So I was thinking like, oh, future Jacques Cousteau hats because I could do ribbing, mindless, and 
I love a good watch cap. Like I, that Jacques Cousteau hat is the one hat that both Andy and I will trade and wear, and we've worn it for years. So um, whether these will be that or something else, I don't know. But I was originally drawn to this one first, and this is her Superwash Merino DK. It's 230 yards of 100% Superwash Merino, and um, this is in the color BB-8 from the new Star Wars movie. So it's got some natural, some blacks, this nice, um, beautiful steel blue gray blue and then the orange so i don't know it caught my attention and then this one i was like oh i could do so many cool things with this this is again her superwash merino dk in the colorway badger i love that colorway so it's that steel gray blue or bluish gray and then like those subtle copper running through it again kind of the metallics i bought that skein of barocco bobbly that was metallic-y and then this so um thanks to erica for those two skeins she had lovely products as well and she had the 50 percent merino 50 percent silk that i want to carry at leading men fiber arts but i'm being told i can't add another base if i if we do i we have to discontinue a base and so um i did not pick up a skein of fingering weight merino silk but that's what i got yesterday so Moving right along into a round of applause, I do want to remind you that there is one week left to save 20% on your order of bags and stitch markers at Art Institute on Etsy. Um, you can get 20% off with the coupon code LEADINGMEN16, that's all lowercase and one word. Again, LEADINGMEN16 will get you 20% off all bags and stitch markers at Art Institute on Etsy, and that's good until next Sunday, May 15th. So thank you, Daisy, once again, for providing us with that wonderful generosity to your shop. All right. Um, last week, I showed off the prize for last week that was donated to the podcast by Michelle of Simply You Fiberworks on Etsy. And we had um, put up for grabs this wonderful drawstring project bag with flowers and butterflies and things. And then it has the wonderful rainbow chevrons on the inside. And it comes with some goodies as well as a... Um, needle Nook or Needle Cozy in My Little Pony. And boy, you guys wanted this bag. Um, so we put out a prompt for you to tell us what is your favorite flower, since there's so many flowers on here. And um, pictures would be lovely. And you guys blew us out of the water. There was, it was nice to see some color and bright, growing, life-filling, filled things, you know? I just, I don't grow things. I don't do the flowers. I don't have the green thumb in the house. Andy does when he has the time and the, the willpower to do it. Um, and so it, that's always nice when we have that, but um, it is what it is. So we drew for a winner, and the winner was... Do you want to announce it? I can't read that far. Okay, it was number 30, who is Skyly Knits, S-K-I-L-E-Y Knits. And that's Amanda from Neo, Michigan. And she likes calla lilies. You know, I didn't say this when we picked it, but um, I often get asked if Callie is short for calliope or calla lily. So um, I like calla lilies. Actually, my mom carried them in her her and my dad's wedding. So um, everybody thinks that I was named after that. Nope, just straight <laughs> up Callie. <laughs> so congratulations Amanda if you would please contact me via Ravelry Dramatic Knits let me know your first and last name and mailing address and I'll get this out to you as soon as I can so congratulations and once again thank you to Michelle of Simply You Fiberworks um, make sure to check out her Etsy page I've linked it in the show notes which can be found at DramaticKnits.com but that's not it oh, Michelle no. has a generous face she has given us enough prizes to do this two more times so this week, we are putting up another skein of her yarn in the um, River Street Sock Base, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, 462 yards in the Peacock Feathers colorway. It is a one-of-a-kind, though, that she's put, so you can see the beautiful, there we go, the different um, browns and greens and blues. And she did offer that we could keep some things. And I almost kept this. But then I said, no, 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 Steve. 
your viewers deserve to touch this lusciousness and get to knit with it. So we are going to put this up for grabs. Once again, you must be a member of the Dramatic Knits video podcast group on Ravelry. You will enter in the appropriate thread, which will be the Simply You Fiberworks Peacock Feathers giveaway. And um, the prop this week is when I see saw the colorway name Peacock Feathers, I thought of Proud as a Peacock. And so I want you to answer for me, what is your proudest moment in life? And so, um, I don't know, hopefully you guys will have a lot of time, uh, a lot of fun thinking back and embracing um, some of the things you've done in your life that um, make you extremely proud, whether that be something as small as, you know, um, telling somebody that was very rude to you at work, you know, when you were done with that confrontation saying, you know, um, you know I'm sorry and I hope you have a nice day. Sometimes I can be very proud at that when a kid is very rude to me that I, you know, maintain my composure at work. That makes me proud some days. Um, but it could be something much bigger than that. And what that is to you is, you know, of course, personal to you. But if you would be willing to share that with us on the board, um, you could be entered for a um, this game. So um, we'll leave that up through next Sunday when we record, and we'll use a random number generator to pull for winners. So again, thank you, Michelle, for um, donating that. All right, um, that being said, I do want to tell you that you should answer, enter anything that you finish in the month of May into our May 2016 Race to the Finished Object Contest. Um, we have two wonderful prizes. The first is a project bag from Anne of the Silver Shed USA. Okay. Callie showed that off last week. And then we also have a pattern from our featured designer, who is Nicole Drewyard. So, Nicole, thank you again for donating your time. And Anne, thank you as well. Make sure you show us what you've been working on and what you've finished this month in the thread. That being said, I do want to remind two people that they've won prizes, and they should get in contact with me um, to claim their prizes. The first one is um, L Mermaid, L-M-E-R-M-D, who is Tina from California. You have won this skein of Simply You Fiberworks, and um, I have not heard back from you yet, so please get in contact with me on Ravelry to claim your prize. First and last name and mailing address, please. Um, back from the month of April, the person who has um, won the skein of yarn, which is this skein, which is a skein of shepherd's wool in the green colorway, that is Yarn Mall. Uh, who is Molly from California. So Molly, please get in contact with me. Again, Dramatic Nuts on Ravelry to claim your prize and give me your address. So that's it for a regularly scheduled show. We're going to move right into center stage, all things leading men fiber arts, because there's not a whole lot to tell you. Um, but um, I first of all, I want to thank all of you guys who have ordered the May colorway of the month long stocking. You guys really like that colorway. Was not expecting to have that type of um, reaction, especially to our sock kits, our long stocking kits that came with the half skein for cuffs, heels, and toes um, that we did kind of in collaboration with Anne of Little Skein in the Big Wool for her school, sock school, summer 2016. Um, wow, you guys blew us out of the water and I'm dying up a whole bunch of that color. Um, trying to get those orders out, so those will be coming out to you here in the next week or so, probably. I should have all the orders out. Um, that being said, in terms of colorways of the month, we are going to take the month of June off. Um, with the zombie apocalypse happening right at the beginning of June, um, we just don't think that we can do a colorway in June. So um, the two months we're taking off this year are June and August. August will be stitches, so just know that there will be no colorways of the month those two months. Um, in terms of what we've updated into the shop, I do believe we updated a new gradient. I want to say it is minty fresh, a green gradient, um, but it's already packed with all the gradients for the show from yesterday, and we kept it packed for our show yeah, uh, this weekend, which I'll talk about here in a second. But I did also update a skein of Showcase in Sunny Side Up, beautiful yellow and a skein of callback, which is sport weight in the Dirty Truce. So I was like, I was actually looking at these going, hmm, hmm different bases, but still. Um, so that's all that's been updated to the shop this week, but you can always check out the shop at leadingmenfiberarts.bigcartel.com. 
And then last but not least, I want to tell you about some upcoming shows. So next weekend, we are going to be in Woodstock, Illinois, um, which is up on the northern end of the state. That being said, I just realized we're not going to be able to record next week because it's a Saturday-Sunday show. So um, I think because of our my, well, my lack of being able to get a whole lot of stuff done, rather than record on, say, Monday night, um, I think we're just going to take next week off. So that... Um, the drawing for this, we're going to leave it open for two weeks. I think that's fair, right? Mm -hmm. So, two weeks to get your name in the hat for this. So, no show next week, um, but two weeks. I promise we'll be back in two weeks. Yeah. So, um, after that, we will be at the Zombie Apocalypse, which is the first weekend in June. We'll be in Rochester, Minnesota. I am going to be um, attending the retreat, which is a lot of fun. I'm also going to be teaching at the retreat. So, um, I'm going to be doing my boomerang breakout session, um, teaching the general shapes of boomerangs and then having an open discussion on how to modify the general shape and incorporate stitch patterns and things like that into um, your boomerang to make your own design. So I'm excited for that. Uh, I'm excited to be classified as a teacher for a retreat that I'm attending. Uh, I don't know if I'd qualify it as a teaching experience, but I'm excited for that. So um, signups will be happening for that soon, and I'm excited to see who's going to sign up. Um, and I may also try to take a few classes myself this year. I think this year's retreats, I was telling Callie, I'm still the year of taking classes and uh, broadening my horizons in terms of knitting education. So um, that's in the beginning of June. Then I think we have the rest of June free, which is great because I'm off school and I need to die like the Dickens and make mini skeins and gradients and everything. Um, in mid-July, we actually are going to be attending Fiber U in Lebanon, Missouri, and um, that was kind of a last-minute add-on. Um, we thought we had applied, but actually our application got lost in the mail, so when I contacted them, um, they actually had an open spot left, so we'll have a bit of a smaller booth there, a regular 10 by 10 going back to the old days for us, but that's fine. Um, and then about a week later, we'll be vending at the Super Summer Knit Together in Nashville. So we're kind of going all over the place this year, and uh, but I don't know if we'd have it any other way. It's kind of fun. Um, and then about a week and a half after that is Stitches. So it's going to be crazy end of summer, the latter half of summer for myself. So um, that's kind of what's going on um, here this summer for Lady Men Fiber Arts. But remember, you can always find our products every day at ladymenfiberarts.bigcartel.com. If you want to see Lady Men Fiber Arts at your local yarn store, um, please, please, please tell them about our products. Direct them over to our website. There is a wholesale orders page uh, tab up on the top, which will give them more information on how they can get in contact with us and order even uh, make orders themselves on the website. I do want to tell you, we are now being officially stocked at Knit One Chicago, which is very exciting. Um, they have some summer knit-alongs going on featuring our yarn, which is amazing as well. Um, and I know that one of our wonderful viewers on the show, but also a very talented designer who does a lot of work for Lady Men Fiber Arts, um, who is Sarah Burghardt Abram. She is a huge fan and works with Knit One Chicago. And so uh, thank you, Sarah, for all your posts and things of that nature re regarding their them carrying our yarn on Instagram and Facebook and whatnot. Um, we really appreciate it. So um, if you're in the Chicago area, I hear it's a beautiful store. I've seen pictures of the inside and the front of the shop, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. So um, Lynn over at Net One Chicago seems to know her stuff, and I'm glad that she's carrying our product. I think that's it for this week, folks. Just shy of an hour. So hopefully the lighting's a little bit better. The focus and clarity may not be as clear, but we got to do what we got to do to get you guys at least some sort of show, right? So I keep looking at the camera above, so sorry in advance <laughs> about that. <laughs> We've got it all going on. <coughs> We've got the laptop in front of the old computer and whatnot. So um, let us know what you think. Um, not that much is going to change. We've got to do what we got to do. But, um, yeah. So until next, in two weeks. We hope you. Knit something. Dramatic. That was horrible ending. All right, bye, guys. <laughs>